Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and we got some road noise. <laughs> That's some good road noise right there. Uh, but anyway, um, so there's a, a brouhaha uh, going on right now with uh, piracy. Yes, that's right. Millennials in their 20s and 30s suddenly discovered piracy. They just had no idea. So what is this? What this is is broke SJWs making excuses why it's the end of the year. They got no money in the bank. They got no sales. They can't pay the rent. They can't pay taxes. They can't buy gifts. So, so who are they casting about? Who are they casting about? Oh, uh, they're like freaking, they're like some 70 uh, year old Mima watching uh, one of those uh, CSI shows and they just said the, uh, the words dark web and they go, ooh, the, both of those words are scary. It's, it's, it's a, it's a piracy. So the, the pirate goes into the computer with the ship and he's, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, millennial, you've grown up freaking pirating, torrenting, freaking everything. You were literally the generation that killed like, the music industry as the way it used to be. Um, so anyway, <laughs> moving on from that, uh, I recently rewatched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I have to say Hollywood because every other time that I talk about this movie, I say uh, Mexico or America, which for Robert Rodriguez and Martin, no, not Martin Scorsese. Oh gosh, fake geek girl alert, Sergio Leone. Um, but anyway, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which was the last uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, and um, it really made me think about uh, this exchange. So this exchange right here is, uh, for people who don't know, and it started on Twitter, so it's stupid, uh, Joe Glass um, uh, talked about how he you know, didn't have any money, and he looked at one of his books, and on some uh, pirate website it showed 5,000 downloads to which he extrapolated those were all lost sales and then calculated that he could have had you know an extra $32,000 and then this uh, inker for a book called um, Crowded uh, looked it up and Crowded all 10 issues or nine issues that were out at the time had 85,000 um, and then they he extrapolated that that was all lost sales and then as these things go, and I've talked about the life cycle of Twitter, it goes from obsessive uh, mentally weirdos who uh, stay on it all day. And then there's the next tier of people who check in and kind of just rubber stamp what they say. And then it becomes uh, actual pros who kind of uh, use these people as you know the, the, the foot soldiers. So anyway, I got up all the way up to uh, uh, Donnie Cates, and he started doing the, you know, the F you and F, 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 F everyone who does it. You're stealing money out of my friend's pockets, to which I made a video. It's like, you know, the conversion rate, if you were to, able to magically make piracy go away, uh, I said I estimated it to be about 2%. If you could magically make piracy, counterfeiting, shoplifting, all physically impossible to do, yeah maybe 2% of the people who were uh, pirating stuff would actually go buy the book. The funny thing is, like two days later, Jude Terror on uh, Bleeding Cool, did, he did a, a piece on this whole controversy, and he gave the exact same figure, 2%. Now, 2% of 5,000 sales, uh, that's not enough to save you know, anything. Even with the, uh, the crowded, you know, an increase in 2% of sales, that wouldn't have done it. But I, I pointed out how... Um, the attitude, the aggressively anti-customer uh, attitude uh, of uh, pros, especially on you know social media, has uh, cost them way more sales than um, uh, what do you call it? Than uh, you know pirating. And then I saw some really frustrating thing by Victor Bogdanovich, who he's doing 2099. He was on um, what was he on? Uh, it's right there. Eh, I had it, and it's gone. Uh, he was on. Oh, he was on Silencer, and he did this uh, two-tweet progression that was the most insane thing I ever saw. And it just showed you, like I said, at some point I'm just starting to feel sorry for these people because they truly uh, can't help it. Um, but uh, so he does one, and he shows like these. Uh, I think they were hardcovers of a collection that he did with Aquaman, and he says, "This is how you fight piracy." You make something so good that people will want a physical copy. And I was like, hell yeah. And this, then his next tweet was, 
if you're saying that you don't like something that I did just because uh, something the writer said that was mean, he was like, punch yourself in the face. I was like, what the, no, you were so close <laughs> to being normal. And now you're just right at the back there. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of reasons for this weird behavior. There's a lot of group think, there's a lot of consensus. They're like, hey, we're all hating the customers. Are you coming with us? Like, oh yeah, cool. Uh, uh, do these people believe it? No, but honestly, like I said, you know, uh, comics is a, is a, industry for socially awkward people so you're not gonna nobody's gonna be like George Peppard smooth all the time but it just becomes so predictable that like I said it doesn't even really make me angry anymore it just kind of makes me feel sorry for them and just wonder what's wrong with them but then uh, somebody sent me of this uh, exchange where uh, Ethan chimed in on piracy and he was saying you know a lot of the same things he's like you know he goes I don't support piracy that's why I don't you know I don't do digital comics because it's so easy to pirate them, but eh, you know, it's just one of those things. And okay, boomer, you just, you're 34 years old and you just suddenly discovered piracy exists like right now. Um, uh, so he's like, you know, it, it's just a thing. So uh, then this um, Don, Donny Cates, uh, you know, he got pretty ass mad. You can tell he's trying to be hurtful. And he says, uh, uh, let me know when Ethan Van Skyver is relevant enough to make a point. To which I'm gonna say a couple things. You were normal a year ago, Donny Cates. <laughs> I remember singling you out like a year ago. It's like, this is how pros are. They just turn out good work. They stay out of controversy. There's no, uh, uh, you know, joining in. And then this is just, you know, uh, Twitter psychos pouring poison into his ear for a year. And now he, the, the biggest problem is that he now sounds like every other SJW. He, you know, except for, you know, regional dialect. His thoughts are exactly the same as some psychopath who spends 12 hours, 12 hours a day, 20 hours a day, uh, uh, tweeting obsessively about Trump and Nazis and Russians and da 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 da. So the problem is, uh, Donny Cates, is that you just made yourself boring. Now getting to relevancy and irrelevancy. So I, like I said, I just rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and uh, sometimes I give an opinion that's very strong, and then a couple months later, it's completely faded. Um, but I will still say that uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is Tarantino's third best film after Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, but it is my favorite one. It's a really interesting story uh, about these two guys, an actor named Jake K. Hill and a stuntman named Cliff Booth. They are a weird combination of best friend, brother, and employer-employee. Uh, Jake uh, Cahill has a pretty solid career that's on its downslope right now, and he's been supporting uh, his friend with just whatever. I mean, at one point, uh, you know, Brad Pitt, as the stuntman, he goes, he goes, I'm not a stuntman, you know, I'm a gopher, I'm fine, I'm cool with it. He's kind of a simple uh, guy with a complicated past, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a good tagline. A simple man with a complicated past. <laughs> um, but... Uh, so the, the big issue is that um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, Jake, Keel, Jake Cahill's, who I estimate he's supposed to be around 40-ish, um, he's kind of uh, realizing he's getting older, the leading man roles are disappearing, and he's having, you know, a, 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 like basically a midlife crisis. Um, it's, a, it's a funny thing, I remember reading an interview with Michael Caine, and he talked about when he was 60, <laughs> the, uh, the leading man roles, especially the romantic uh, lead roles. He's like, he's like, they disappeared. And he, he's like very, very hurt. And I was like, man, you made it like 20 or 30 years, you know, longer than most actors do. You had a good long run. He's like, yeah, now I play butlers. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, it's a very uh, uh, poignant story because, you know, you just see like the, the, the heartbreak of, a guy who, you know, worked his whole life to do something, and now, because of, you know, age and the changing of the time, you know, he came up in, like, the, the shoot 'em up uh, uh, westerns of the 50s, and now it's, like, every, you know, it's, like, 1969, everything's, like, hippies and youth, and he's old and not a hippie, he's, like, the opposite of a hippie. So, uh, he also has some, you know, alcoholisms that are uh, causing problems with his acting. So, he's just kind of uh, at a loss and, and, and pretty desperate. And... Uh, I just thought about, you know, that's kind of the, you know, the definition of, uh, of irrelevant, that you're no longer uh, wanted, you're no longer vital, uh, you're no longer, you know, with it, hip, hep, now. And I was just thinking how backwards it was for Donny Cates to tell 
Ethan that because Donny Cates is successful, but he's successful of the old model, of the dying model. He's basically, you know, Jake Cahill. He did the standard way to get into the industry. You do uh, any, you know, indie gig you can get. You hope for some acclaim and some sales. Then you get into the big two and you just run it out, you know? Uh, although there's a there's a new like kind of like a third chapter is you work at the big two until you can get a Netflix deal and get into Hollywood and things like that. But um, I was just thinking like, you know, corporate comics and, you know, a ridiculous crossover with like 54 tie-ins. Yeah, you know, you can dye your hair all you want, but you are the 100% opposite of punk rock. Meanwhile, Ethan's over there with no hair to dye. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, he is the future. This overweight man from the Pine, this overweight balding man from the Pine Barrens, he's punk rock. Not you with the dyed hair and the skinny jeans. You are corporate and not just corporate, but like a, a corporate, you know, the most successful uh, example of corporate dinosaur comics. Uh, and meanwhile, like I said, your, your brain's been absolutely uh, poisoned. So if you're looking for relevant versus irrelevant, you know, you're you're the best example of the the last of the uh, irrelevant dinosaur comics there, Donnie. So besides that, I really don't have uh, that much more to say. You know, Donnie Cates himself is going to be fine, but all of that kind of crew, the uh, the Twitter obsessed, the hate the customers, the little catty mean girls vendettas things. Ah, you know, that's, uh, I was going to say it's a short road, but effectively the road is over. The asphalt turned to gravel, and the gravel's just turning to soil. You know, you're just going to just be buried up in the axle in your uh, vehicle that's probably running out of gas anyway. Wow, so many mixed metaphors. Do I even know what I'm saying at this point? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's a mystery. It makes it more exciting that way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. We got the uh, the final on the Esme 2.0 uh, pinup uh, for the Iron Sights uh, Two Psychos campaign. It is freaking amazing. Uh, so the pinup comes with you know every uh, uh, all the different levels that have a book, and then it's so good. I'm gonna probably do a uh, uh, a print you know in a in a tube. So. Uh, I got the, the prints for the, uh, the cover coming in, uh, uh, I guess it got delayed for the holiday. They said they just shipped it, so it should be here in a couple days, and then I'm going to order some uh, uh, prints of the, uh, of the uh, Esme pinup and put that up. Uh, so that's going good, and uh, thanks for everything, and I'll have another uh, comic review up soon. Thanks. Bye.